In the first 24 hours of its release, more than a million people logged into Xbox Live to play Halo 3. By the time the billionth online Halo 3 match had been played in 2009, only 800,000 games of Halo 2 had been played. That's because Halo 3 is the best multiplayer game. Welcome back to Professionally Casual Gamers, the podcast where two friends kick back after a long work week and casually talk about everything gaming. I'm your host, Alex, joined by co-host and fancy food aficionado, Ralph. Fancy good, food? Man? What are you talking about? Yeah, so I I think it was probably Sam, because I know you don't post on Instagram much, but she posted oh, you in yeah. like, a restaurant, and I saw like the dishes, and I'm like, damn dude where'd you guys go like i don't even know like what that is but uh it looked you, you know it's good when the the portion sizes are just like too not small American they're like yeah all. they're very small <laughs> they're at, so i was actually talking to sam so um we went to this restaurant i honestly i forgot mm-hmm. the name of it we just went to a nice little restaurant uh sam had a work event on friday in chicago right yeah in chicago she had a work event on friday um her company sponsors the chicago sky which like okay. so that was like super WNBA, fun WNBA yeah W team, yeah, yeah WNBA uh what do you call it? champions Chicago Sky I didn't they won know. like the last the last one yeah so I didn't even know that happened. but um we went to this I don't know it's like I forgot even like the type of cuisine that it was okay but um yeah we just like stopped by it, it seemed like a nice place uh Sam wanted to go to maybe try out something nicer um I got the roasted duck and then she got Ooh. The peak uh, pecking duck from Yakuza. I wish, dude. I, I don't think I've ever had a pecking duck. Like I haven't either. Yeah, we, we gotta either. we gotta try we it should. out. We should. We should. We should yeah. definitely do it. Um, and then she had like this pasta dish. I, I liked her dish way more than mine, but uh, mine was still really good. Portions were perfect. Like that's how yeah. you know. Like we get a little bit too much food in America because I was like the self loathing is high. Yeah, I was like I'm as definitely the good grease, with the sodium this, content. With this meal, so. Yeah, no, it, it was a good time. I didn't realize that was going to be my title this week, but yeah, it was a, it was. Fun. I got to think of something every week now. Now that I'm hosting, yeah, for sure. Um, that's cool. What part of town is it in? I believe we we're in the South Loop. I like okay. was not super from. Uh, we were like by Michigan Ave, so like, not that doesn't not make sense. It can't be South Loop. Um, it was like uh, no Michigan Avenue runs down to South. Does Loop it? Too. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. But, I, that's cool. Yeah, maybe you can use your editing magic to like throw in some images of like You're asking a lot of me. <laughs> like you're editing like, magic. Hey, that's just you a now. heads up. Can we do face cams <laughs> while the footage is playing? We'll see. Well, I'm sure uh, I'm sure you'll do what you can, I guess. But anyways, yeah, so we are kicking off episode thirty two this week. Uh, let's talk let's talk about what's been keeping us busy ralph i don't know if you've been playing games apparently you picked up books again you <laughs> rediscover your love for reading i like just learned about this do you want to start us off yeah so i actually i don't think i've played anything this week other than rogue company i think rogue company is kind mm-hmm. of just like one a one a requirement for myself for my job just so that i know what the game feels like on live this week and week, a requirement to the boys. A requirement to the boys. Um, this week was a little rough. While we played, there was like some terrible server issues, and I was like really stressed about it. That but, did um, happen. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, but um, overall, still really fun. Like I, ca- I, I still wanted to keep on playing, even though like we had a rough start to the night. But yeah, it was a good time. Um, I did turn like I started downloading stuff on my Game Pass because I haven't played Game Pass in a while. Nice. Um, what do you call? It? I tur- I started playing Hollow Knight. Because I know, so, mm-hmm. like, everyone's really, like, excited about Silk Song, So I want to try that out. I hate platformers, though. And I'm going to try and see if I can kind of, like, yeah. keep it's a going. heavy. It's, like, it's kind of like Ori in the Blind Forest, yeah. right? Like, gameplay-wise. Yeah, which is, my guess which is, like, that like, is, like, similar to, like, the Metroidvania genre. Right. And my guess is, like, it's a little bit, like, Dark Souls-y. Because I feel like all the people that like it, like, think of it as, like... A the story. Dark Souls of 2D <laughs> games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, um, so I know Silk Song's coming out, so I, I'm gonna, I downloaded it on my, uh, what do you call it, my PC. I, I actually mm-hmm. just ordered a wireless adapter for my Elite controller, which I did oh, not nice. know I needed. So, um. For right, PC, right? Yeah, for PC, yeah. because I have it, like, uh, connected with a USB-C cord, and I always try to play it, like, wireless, but I didn't realize it actually needed a wireless adapter, so I bought That's one. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm surprised it would need that. Yeah, which is yeah. weird, because I have an Elite two like i have this guy so like i don't Ooh, know why the cameras yeah so i don't know why any uh, extra stuff um but 
Sam and I actually, well, actually, I just bought Sam um, Pikmin 3. Is Deluxe? The, yeah, the new one, yeah. <laughs> so we, oh, my God. We Zach the, is going to love that. For yeah. some reason, Zach loves Pikmin. Oh, really? Yeah, because yeah. um, we, we stopped by the GameStop so I could get the adapter. Apparently, they're sold out everywhere, so I had to buy it online. But while mm. we were at the GameStop, Sam's like, I want Pikmin. So we bought Pikmin for her. Um, but other than that, yeah, just Rogue Company. Um, as Alex was saying, while we were doing our errands today, we passed by a library and we wanted to get all educated and stuff. Books. <laughs> so, so reading. Um, we stopped by, got library cards. Um, I was, it was so funny. I have a funny story and I know this isn't related to games. Oh, but, let's do it. Yeah. But, um, what, so, um, like if you didn't know, like I grew up in Chicago, so like I technically already had a library card beforehand. And so, um, one, like, when I was trying to get my library card, I didn't realize my driver's license has expired. So I was just like, holy shit, I've been driving with Oh, no, yeah, you're supposed to get, license. I think I renewed mine, like, right, in so, 2019. So when I turned 30, I didn't realize I had to, like, renew my driver's license. I'm okay, okay. though. Uh, I just looked up online. There's, like, a, like, a, like, a three-month grace period, but it looks like in Illinois they even extended that to July, so I'm going to get that uh, sorted out as soon as I can. So that's the first one. I, like, panicked because I was like, holy shit, I'm going to jail. Um, The second one, I was super, like, gung-ho, like, getting the stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah, I grew up in Chicago. I I should already be in the system. And then Mm -hmm. I was talking to Sam. I'm like, I think I was pretty good with my, um, like, my late fees or making sure that I didn't, like... Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I didn't keep my um whatever. I had two overdue books from when I was a child. <laughs> from like middle school or elementary school? From elementary school. Like the the I think it was like oh, no. eighty dollars for like late fees. That's but, like the cost of four books. Right. Like more. Way more. But um one, I was like, damn, I was talking mad shit that I didn't have late fees. But two, um, the cool was like such a, the dude was like to, totally fine. He was like, we're just going to waive those for you. It's been like 20 years. So, but um, Sam got. So those books that you, the, for the late fees, are those just like gone? They're lost somewhere? They're lost or... in the ether. I feel like if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure they were like, you know those, like, zoo books from Nickelodeon? Do you know what I'm talking about? There's, like, commercials for, like, zoo books. Maybe maybe Be All and everyone else, were, like, remember I'm them? not sure I know what you're talking about. I was pretty heavily on the Cartoon Network on, though. Yeah, I so there are these zoo books, and I'm pretty sure both of those were the, the overdue books. But um, I got three books from the library. I'm reading one now, Mouse, which is banned everywhere for some reason. So I'm, I wanted to check that out. Um, and then Sam got, I will say, like, eight books. So uh, wow. fun fact, I just found out. You can have like sixty books out from the library <laughs> at one time, so it's kind of insane. Interesting, but, but yeah, I like, um I actually renewed my library card too last year. Nice. Um, and it wasn't even to get a book; it was to rent a video game. No, although I should use it for that. I think that would be helpful. Um, I always forget you can do that. You can yep. just like rent video games. Um, the second Spider Man was Tom Holland. What is it called? Far from Home. Yeah. Yeah, so I watched, because I actually hadn't seen it, um, and then I wanted to see No Way Home, um, so I watched it, like, two weeks before No Way Home, which is nice. awesome. Was it, yeah, like, a DVD or Blu-ray? Blu-ray, yeah, yeah. Nice. I think ours were DVDs, but I guess beggars can't be choosers. Um, but I think for games, I think I am going to start playing Death Stranding, because mm. uh, Sam just gave me the Walking go-ahead. Walking Simulator. Yeah. Sam just gave me the go-ahead to get um, PlayStation Plus, whatever it's called. Extra? Extra, yeah. So uh, you'll hear more about that next week to see if it's worth it. So we'll see how that goes. Cool. Yeah, how about and, you? Yeah, so, and just uh, some um, context on the PlayStation Plus Extra. Um, PlayStation is taking some notes from Game Pass, and so the previously just PlayStation Plus is now three different tiers. PlayStation Plus Basic, I think it's called, which is yeah, essential I think package. It's PlayStation essentials, essentials, yeah. yeah. Um, the next tier is extra, and then the one after that is premium. There's a few different differences, um, but yeah, 
It's yeah. basically just trying to be a like game pass. Yeah, so the difference is, I think, is just extra gets you like these extra games that you can download that's not just part of your library that you normally... PS4 and PS5 yeah, games. PS4 yeah. and PS5 games. Um, it's fine. Like, it's okay. There's a couple of games I want to check out on there that I probably haven't played. Uh, for someone like me, it doesn't seem very worth it because when I looked at the list, a lot of it are games that mm-hmm. I own because I do play a lot of video games, at least on the PlayStation ecosystem. And then on the PS Plus Premium side, you can cloud stream. So, like, imagine your PlayStation Now stuff. So that cloud streaming, if you want to play, is, like, PS2 games, PS1 games, and, like, some PS3 games. You can stream those. But additionally, they have, like, these game trials. So, like... like Demos. Like, you pay for demos. So, like, if you want to play, like, Tiny Tina's, or I think it's, like, the new Uncharted collection, Mm -hmm. um, you can check those out there, too. But yeah, I mean, it seems fine. It's definitely not as good as Game Pass, but if you're already playing for PlayStation Plus, which is what I'm doing, um, it's like an extra $3 from your normal subscription. So like, oh, like I just checked right now, it would be an extra $13 for the rest of the year for me. So like, mm-hmm. if my subscription for PlayStation Plus ends in October, so it's like $13 for all of the rest of the months, which we thought, it's fine. That, that should be okay. Yeah, yeah and... There's some games that, and we like just talk about this, but like um, if Seafood's added, if Tunic is added, uh, maybe some other stuff that like I've been looking to like forward to playing. Uh, if if the catalog is right, like I'll happily pay for it. Um, right now, it's not really there for me. I as much as I want to play Death Stranding, like I know I'm not gonna enjoy it. I think like I went on this huge rant for like one of our. I games just want to try episodes. it. Yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but yeah, so I uh, I started playing Breath of the Wild, finally. What do you I think? think? I'm, like, I'm excited. I think I'm like a few hours into it, so in the grand scheme of things, like, nothing. What, like, I beat the tutorial hours? area. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and I, I so, um, I just visited B-Wall up in Madison, so I was coming back from that, and I was talking to his friend Sam, and he's like, dude, Zach has 100% of Breath of the Wild. Even the DLC? Uh, I don't know. He's he's found all the the seeds and like he has all like the gems or whatever like yeah. the orbs, which is insane because it's an, obviously an open world game and there's just like I don't like finding these seeds is so like haphazard and like yeah. they're so hidden that like to get like a hundred percent it just seems like insane. Yeah, I mean there's four hundred um, right? There's four hundred seeds, and the inside joke is I, I think you get like a golden poop at the end of it as like a reward i'm almost positive what do the seeds do um i think they give you some like extra bags it's been a long time since i played breath of the wild like either some extra bag space or some items and stuff but at a certain point there's diminishing returns to them so like there's no reason to get them unless you're just a completionist so that's why i think the last item you get is like a golden poop and that's why it's like funny because it's like the dev saying you really didn't need to do this, but here you go. It's so troll. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm definitely not gonna get 100. percent I'm not gonna get or anywhere near. But I just wanna, I wanna play it. I wanna explore enough where I feel satisfied with yeah. my experience with it. And then obviously I need to beat Calamity Ganon. Yeah. What's um? um because... What's your um? What's your initial impression so far? So there's some stuff that I really like. I think it's great. Like you can climb anything. Mm-hmm. You know, basically as long as your stamina allows you to scale up high enough. Um, he he doesn't have a lot of stamina to start, but I know you can increase that meter right. uh, along with your health. I run out of bag space, like, for weapons so frequently. Right. Like, I think I can hold, like, six weapons, and they all break after, like, four swings. Yeah. So, th- like, there's some stuff that I'm like, wow, this is, like, really innovative and, like, player-friendly. And there's other stuff, like... Weapon durability, literally no one enjoys. I'm so glad Elden Ring got rid of that. It's the first, so well, Sekiro didn't have it, but it's the first like Dark Souls game to mm-hmm. not have weapon durability, which is awesome. Um, if you're like too cold, pro- maybe if you're too hot as well in Breath of the Wild, you take damage. Yeah, but which you can... is annoying. No, I totally get that, but like there's some cl- like I think there's just like some clever stuff. I get the weapon durability stuff, but there's like. I think there's reasons to why that that is, and I know most people will probably be like, no, it still sucks. But um, with the cold stuff, like mm-hmm. I think there's like some clever things that they put into the game that make it interesting. So like, 
if you you're in a cold air if you eat hot peppers like it warms you up. But you can't up. just straight up eat the hot peppers because you texted me this too. And yeah. I'm like, that's not right. But I know you played it. You haven't right. played it in like a while. You need to like go and like craft something that like involves the hot peppers and then you eat whatever you crafted, mm. um, which I found out after. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it, yeah, it's still like a little annoying. And I know like later on, like you could probably just like put on a shirt. Like right now, right, like, yeah. I have a shirt. I just have pants. Yeah. Which is kind of funny um so yeah the weapon durability is not great like the weather stuff right now it's annoying but you know when i find like because there's like a bunch of outfits i know in the yeah. game um so yeah i know in the grand scheme of things it's not a huge deal um the graphics are the graphics i don't know like i wish it looked better this is a switch launch game yeah. it's on the switch period so i mean it was on the wii u <laughs> yeah it was on the wii u as well yeah. as cross-generational um the music is great yeah classic zelda music it's cool just going back to hyrule and then like in this state like you see the temple of time like in its ruins and right. like in this like harness state and like oh man it's it's interesting um yeah but like i i know that this isn't narrative heavy which is a shame mm -hmm. because like there's some good dialogue like the state of the world like there is even like um these four like characters that like yeah. helped you like pre calamity. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I feel like they could lean really heavily into the narrative, but I know that's like not what they're going for. I with think, this game. I, I don't know. Maybe it was, I mean, I haven't played a lot of the other Zelda games. I mm -hmm. feel like this was more narrative heavy than the other games. Maybe I'm, I'm completely oh, cool. wrong. So, okay. but like I'm may, like I said, it's been a really long time since I played this, but like, I remember when I first played it at launch, people were like, oh, wow, like, it's really interesting playing the story and, like, all the story beats that go with it. Mm -hmm. um, reason being... Okay, cool. Because um, what was interesting to people is that, like... And I thought this was interesting, too, is that they failed. And I thought that was, like, a cool twist to the story. Where, like... Yeah. They, like... Yeah. like they the lost again, yeah. and then he, you know, took over destroy the world. Right, so, yeah. like... And Zelda was, like, more involved with the story. It, it's, like, a cool thing. So, like, um, going back to the weapon durability, mm -hmm. I think, one, yeah, the weapon durability definitely sucks. At one point, like, you'll get weapons that don't break as often, because I'm assuming you'll get, like, rusty swords and, like, clubs and crap like that. But, like, once you get yeah. to, like, the higher end, like, honestly, like, you... I think it, one, makes getting interesting weapons more valuable and, like, interesting because it makes you like choose what you want to use and then two yeah. once you get the master sword which is not really a spoiler at this point because you always no, get I know. a master I sword. know there's like a recharge system on it too right right so like what do you call it like i think that makes some of the more impressive and strong weapons more valuable because mm -hmm. like it's harder to get and then they're 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 really strong so that that's one for the weapon durability i think one of my favorite things about the zelda game in particular and and like listeners like i really don't like puzzles which means i <laughs> really don't like zelda games like i didn't like so i played uh i played twilight princess mm -hmm. like back in the day i did not like it that much because i really hated puzzles and like that's kind of like the bread and butter for Zelda games, um, but in a sense. Yeah, yeah, like it's definitely I, I want to say bread and butter, but it's a core mechanic to Zelda. It's a core games, mechanic, right? For so sure. like, but like I really enjoyed um, Breath of the Wild. Uh, one thing that I loved about the game is that there are just interesting things that you can do in the game that you try, and for some reason it works, like. Like, there's just interesting logic in it. Like, for example, if you, like, burn down a field, one, the, the the fire, like, rages on. But two, if you use your paraglider on top of the burned down, burn down, burn down field, you, yeah, it lifts you up way higher. Yeah, Which is super interesting. And then, like, like if you, th if you see, like, a valley that you can't cross, you're like, can I chop down a tree? <laughs> and then can I, like, cross that valley? It, yeah it, it works so like there's really interesting things that they they put in game that like are like makes you think oh like i wonder if this would work and it does work and it's really cool so yeah yeah there's a lot of mechanics that go hand in hand and just 
um, create such a, like a nuanced experience, right? Um, and a lot of like trial and error, and it, it, yeah, it really um, it rewards curiosity, yeah, in, in your play style, which is really cool. Um, and, and then like picking up all the different weapons stuff narratively, it makes sense given like where Link came from and like what he's being thrown into. Um, he's just like, he is basically like a dude. Like, yeah. um, I have to do what now? I have to save the world. I literally am just in my underwear. So <laughs> just like finding... Does he start out in his underwear? Yeah. I like You have to it. pick up the pants. I almost missed them. I didn't even realize. I totally forgot. Yeah. They're like Under Armour shorts. Yeah. They're not just like whitey tighties. They're, 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 they're like they're green tighties. <laughs> uh, like but yeah, it's it, it's cool. Like, I, like hot take. It's a good game um it's it's cool i i know that one thing that people didn't like was like zelda games have like traditional dungeons like fire temple water temple Light right. Temple, etc these are just like small little um right. dungeons that you go into you solve like a puzzle then you get out well they technically do like, have traditional dungeons so like oh, they do yeah I so, like, yet, i'm not gonna so. like spoil them but like yeah like there's definitely like so in zelda there's i think there's like a hundred smaller dungeons in total but there are four core dungeons that you kind of go through that are like bigger okay. and like are they like, based on like those four like heroes or guardians yes i would say sorry yeah. okay cool all right yeah so we can move on with that but so i've dipped my toes in it i i, I like it uh, like i said i want to i want to give it some time but yeah um as we're going to jump into right now the the summer game fest is like the worst it feels weird to say that like it's just it's rocking and rolling because while it is and there's there's been so much awesome information it's just so much different than e3 where it's like three days of just like non-stop information yeah. this is like there's like there's highs and lows there's highs yeah. and lows there aren't really lows there's just like a lull period yeah. and then like when the showcases come up like you know yeah, the excitement I'm, and the energy spikes up we talked about this like last week it, it's just yeah. hard to be excited for every single like conference there's just too many right yeah. you know like there are a lot yeah. there's a lot that we don't even cover to be yeah. honest yeah for um sure. yeah but yeah so this is definitely one of the major talking points of the summer games fest it's the xbox and bethesda showcase um yeah so they the, we only not had that but we had the final fantasy 7 25th anniversary showcase uh which is obviously hype so what we'll we'll get into that but yeah, let's start off with Xbox and Bethesda. Um, similar to like the last couple episodes, we'll mm-hmm. just run through um, a lot of the announcements. Not sure. all of them, because there were there were a lot. Um, there are some. So okay, overall, how would you rate this showcase versus like the PlayStation One? I mean, I thought the I thought the Xbox One was way better, way better than the PlayStation One, honestly. And I know mm-hmm. people really like the PlayStation One, but I just it's just. When I was watching the PlayStation one, I was constantly thinking, I'm like, this isn't your E3 showcase. Like, that's all I kept on thinking about. I'm like, yeah, like, you're showing PS Plus, like, uh, PS VR stuff. Yeah, you're showing, like, um, some really strong third-party stuff. But in my head, I'm like, this isn't the PlayStation one. The PlayStation right, one... Right, because there weren't have... a lot of first... There weren't, like, basically any first Right, parties, yeah, so, like, like there's no the PlayStation VR. Studio stuff there. So yeah. I kept on thinking, well, I'm assuming there's going to be another one in the next couple of weeks, right? The real the real PlayStation one. So, um, but the Xbox one was really good. Like, I, there's a lot of interesting stuff on there. Like, I liked that the marketing team kept on hitting home in the next 12 months like all of these games are going to be uh, on game pass in the next 12 months and i think that is a very interesting uh position to do because mm-hmm. i think there's a lot of like criticism coming from like the community saying oh like xbox doesn't have any games coming this year right and so, that's been the rhetoric from the community for the past like decade right I don't even know if that's an exaggeration. Like from the Xbox One, right? right. Till you know, maybe like last year yeah. when like Halo Infinite came out. Um, but yeah, it seems like, and this was supposed to be their year. Delays happen. It right. is what it is. Um, but it seems like 2023 will be the year we thought 2022 will be in some regard. Yeah, I mean, um, Xbox is definitely yeah. going to start churning some stuff out. Like, I think it was just a reminder that mm-hmm. one Xbox owns what do you call it, Activision Blizzard. So that's one. Yeah, they sure right? do. So, like, 
that like seeing Overwatch two, seeing like what do you mm-hmm. call it, Diablo here was definitely like an interesting like eye opener. Like it was cool. Yeah. I'm curious I don't know, like I'm curious to see what that looks like moving forward. Obviously Overwatch two is going free to play. So mm-hmm. I'm assuming it needs to be on PlayStation because it's free to play, but you never know. Right? Yeah, so, like... so a lot of the stuff listed on here, that's actually a great point, um, is obviously gonna going to be on Xbox, but a lot of stuff is gonna be multi plat as well. Right. So Yeah, but the big thing they did hammer home every time is that it's all gonna be on Game Pass. Right. So, yeah. So uh which is, you know, their their ecosystem, their business model, which is so enticing and yeah. it's it is better than the PlayStation Plus one, like yeah. pretty objectively, I would say. So yeah, for sure. let's get into it. Uh, they start off strong with Redfall, and they... that's something we've been hearing Everyone's a lot about. Everyone's so excited about Redfall. It looked so bad to me. I don't know why. Yeah, I was going to say, like, it just kind of popped up into the news. Like, it would always be coupled with Starfield. Like, oh, Redf- Redfall and Starfield, yeah. like, we're getting information. Oh, oh, they got pushed back. The community's pissed. Right. Um, I don't know what I thought this game was supposed to be, but I did not think it was supposed to be, like, a left a left for dead like right you know where there's like there's vampires not zombies but yeah. there's like these vampires there's like four characters uh seemingly like co-op i don't think couch co-op but like cooperative multiplayer yeah. with your friends taking on these like vamp. i don't know yeah just a heads up for some reason i think maybe the internet's cutting off so like you you totally froze up froze for a little bit there oh i froze up yeah am i okay now yeah you're good um but yeah no i totally get okay. where you're coming from i think so just like as a little clarification point one thing that i keep on hearing while i was listening to other podcasts about redfall they're trying mm-hmm. to hammer home that it is not a left for dead kind of game it looks like a left for dead kind of game but it's well not. they failed with me then yeah. because that was like the first thing that went in my head so it's more like borderlands it's like a borderlands kind of game so like it's a little bit okay. more narrative focus there's it's not really into instant space so i think there is like a general story of what that that's going to be like it's so, gonna be a looter looter I shooter I'm, sure. I'm honestly i don't know like like i looked at it my first thought was like, man, these zombies, or not zombies, these like, these vampires look weird. <laughs> like, you know me, like, they have like these weird, lanky, long arms. Like, whenever I kept on seeing the zombies, like, I was just like, man, these look like weirdly designed, uh, not zombies, sorry, weirdly designed vampires, vampires. from like PlayStation, yeah. like, 5. Or not PlayStation, not PlayStation 5, like, or... uh, from like PlayStation 3. Like, when. Like, Damn, you could not, not even last job. No, no, like when you, you know, when like with old games, like that you couldn't get like the amount of pixels and polygons you needed to make the actual shape. Oh, I so, see what like, you're saying. So like yeah. the fingers are super long and then the arms are like a weird shape. So maybe that was like a stylistic choice, but like I thought it was like super strange. If you, I'll, I'll put it, I'll put some footage in like specifically what I'm talking about. But um, the other thing too is just, it like looked fine. Like I wasn't too excited about it. Um, it, I a lot of people are excited about Red Fog. I know it's like Arcane's m- making it, but like I think that's that's got to be why, right? They're like yeah. Arcane has a great reputation in the community. They have a, like a great catalog of games. People love Deathloop, obviously. Um, yeah, I I don't know. It seems like that's where the hype is. Like yeah. if you replace Arcane with like just like a random um like third party studio i think people will be like all right they'll, they'll put on the, the 1.5 speed as you do oh no Stop that <laughs> i was a busy boy that day yeah i actually i i watched this today this is at the time of recording it's saturday um june 18th so i will i'm watching this like what like oh you just later. watched the oh, i've had a busy realize. yeah i've had yeah. a super busy week okay um yeah, so that actually remind me to bring up something about that after we go through the Final Fantasy stuff. Cool. But um, yeah, so that's Redfall coming next year. Uh, again, as Ralph said, everything listed in the showcase either coming out um, six months from now, or within the six months, or um, the back half. So all within twelve months. So all very exciting. Yeah. Um, Hollow Knight, Silk Song. You just talked about that yeah. one. The first one on uh, your Steam Deck or Xbox Live for PC. Yeah. Um, yeah, it seems good. Everyone's uh, super mad about it because there was no due date. <laughs> or like there was yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's, I don't know, it seems it seems fun. That's a series that I wouldn't mind getting into. Is this 
the second game. Yeah, so Silk Song would be the second game. So Hollow Knight is okay. the first game. I think if you're keeping up with your PlayStation Plus downloads, because I always I always just jump on every. It was on to, there. Yeah, so like Hollow Knight should be on there. Because I just so checked. I feel like I've seen more than one Hollow Knight game like release though. Was it's, there like a spinoff or something? No, I think it might have been like Hollow Knight and maybe like a Hollow Knight Definitive Edition. That might be like mm. the the deal. But it's definitely some DLC just, or something. Yeah, it's definitely just Hollow Knight, and then this is Silk Song. So okay, I mean, yeah, yeah, it seems fun enough. Uh, so maybe I'll give it a shot. I don't know. Obviously, I say that a lot. Yeah, and then but the backlog is always growing. So for sure, that's how I got you. Um, High on Life, made by oh! I think like one of one of like the the creators of Rick and Morty, which is very obvious because like you hear Morty's voice and like one of the oh, guns. Oh jeez! Oh jeez! Rick! Oh wee! <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. So this the vibe I was getting was so it's a first person shooter. It kind of seemed like Ratchet and Clank for adults. Yeah. I'm like not that Ratchet and Clank isn't like you know yeah but like um, there's like it, a, there was like one of the weapons was a like a stabby knife and then yeah. it would smile as you stabbed people yeah it seemed like very very just like uh, over the top like tongue in cheek humor yeah uh, just you know Rick, Rick and Morty as a video game yeah I'm yeah. actually really stoked for that game I'm definitely picking really it up. yeah I'm okay. I'm definitely gonna pick that up in October. I don't know. I I, ju- I really like Rick and Morty humor. I don't know if you. Oh, do. it's it's great. But yeah, um, Rick and Morty's great. But um, yeah, like it looked honestly like one of the better looking games like mm-hmm. during the the conference. Um, I thought it looked beautiful, and I I it just looked great, and I love Justin. Is, I think is it Justin Rowling's voice? Because he voices Mo- Morty, right? That sounds right. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. It's it's nice because. There's so many different graphical styles, and there seems to be like a huge push. Maybe this is just the PlayStation dude and me talking, but a huge push for like we need to move towards like realism. Like right. you need to see like the sweat glands on the people's face <laughs> and like the wrinkles in their forehead. And then there's stuff like High on Life, yeah. which like you said, like it looks great like graphically, and it's like the complete other spectrum yeah. of that. You know, um, Alex just loves seeing sweat glands. He's just like, oh my I love God, seeing the sweat here. glands, man. That's what it's makes just, a it's good video game. It's refreshing to see stuff like this that also still like pushes the like the, the fidelity yeah. um, benchmark. Yeah, so. it's like I think it looks just as good. I mean, I don't I don't want to get flamed, but it looks pretty good like on the same level as like Ratchet and Clank. Obviously, Ratchet and Clank that looked stunning. <laughs> Alex's eyes were like, "Don't say that, man." But um, I thought it looked nice. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. Uh, yeah, it, it looks like a fun game. So interested to see how that'll do. Uh, my games partnership with Xbox Game Pass. This it's is it. it's crazy. Um, not really much in terms of like new games content. being yeah. ported. But essentially, just if you have Game Pass, and I'm assuming you link that with like your Riot Games account, um, you'll get a, basically all of the free content that you yeah. would, well, the like progression content from like leveling up, you would just like automatically get like all the champs and league, um, as well as Wild Rift, all the playable heroes Valorant. and Valorant. Yeah, and like some other. Do you like, know when that starts? Is it like immediately? I don't know. Uh, this year, yeah, like, this year I remember saying, but I don't, I don't know, like what specific. Day. It's kind of crazy to me because I, I feel like everyone was talking about Starfield, and I get it, like Starfield's the big whatever, but yeah. I honestly thought this was the bigger news. <laughs> like maybe it's because I played League and I know how big League is worldwide. Yeah. Like, like the amount of players that play League and the amount of subscribers that I would expect people jumping onto game pass just to get all of the champions like right i think that's gonna be like oh league is like our main right like lifestyle game or valorant so and then these other games you get with game pass are like the cherry on top of that yeah like i don't know what are your thoughts on there because i i like my mouth dropped when i when i heard that i thought it was insane you know that's interesting it wasn't like my favorite part of the presentation but i think it might be the most interesting yeah because this reminded me of like amazon games how they have like that deal with riot and like a lot of other um pc games and like yeah like rogue Lentures company game. you know like yeah like amazon rogue prime company. exactly where it's like oh if you link your account like we'll give you some free stuff so it's making 
Game Pass, Game Pass was originally right just on Xbox One, right? Um, as a, as a stream service, now it's on PC. Now you have X Cloud, and now there's just like this additional content that you can get by proxy just by having it. So it is, it it is just becoming an ecosystem in like yeah. every yeah. definition of the word, which is really cool. Uh, I think it's exciting. You get so much bang for your buck. You got so much bang for your buck years ago, right? And now it's just like even more, which yeah. is delight it's really consumer friendly it's delightful yeah what's um, interesting to me oh, yeah. is when i brought this up at work um yeah and i brought it up to my manager he was he was like yeah how's like, the work secrets no it's not work secrets but when i was talking to my manager about it i was <laughs> like this is crazy and i'm like yeah no it definitely is crazy however apparently this has been happening in korea so i forgot the With name game pass no not not game pass there's like a service in korea called like bang or whatever that is Mm -hmm. um where yeah like all the champions are just open for all of the korean players and apparently it hasn't really affected like sales on on anything for for league so riot probably just like turned it on because they said oh like it's probably going to be the same sequence and we'll just widen the net a little bit more so i mean we may think it's crazy now but like maybe Mm -hmm. in asia it's not too foreign or not too insane that this this stuff like happens yeah that meme where it's like, ah, oh, first time, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, and you, you have to imagine there's a bunch of analysts being like, okay, if this happens, like, this should impact our numbers this much, this partnership. Right. With, they definitely thought like, about it. You know? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, definitely not something you just, like, jump into. So they know what they're doing, obviously. So cool stuff. Um, pl- a Plague Tale Requiem. Yep. This is the second one. I know there's, like, a Plague Tale Innocence, I believe. Right. I have not played... I've not played the first one, but this one seems cool. It seems like a little bit of a spoopy game. Spoopy? Uh, really, like, there's, like, some gross, like, the rats, like, running right. around. Like, I hate rats. You hate rats? Rats and snakes are, like, my worst fear. Like, spiders, I, didn't realize that. I could not care less about. Spiders really? Rats, dude. If I see one on in, like, Chicago, like, I'm going to the other side of the sidewalk. Do you, you don't like snakes either? Hell no. Dude, I had to deal with snakes so much in the Philippines. Have I, have I ever told you my uh, my snake story? You told me a lot of stories. I actually don't think a snake has been involved in any Yeah, so I was watching T... Like, I, I think it was, like, maybe eight. Um, and this is going to sound super strange to some people that don't live in the Philippines, but we had maids at the time. My mom was, uh... My mom was working abroad. But, uh... I think it's very Japanese, too, where your parents work abroad and some people, like, help you out to like survive or whatever but it's um, an anime i don't know if yeah. it translates to real life but maybe yeah. it's a, maybe it's a it's an asian culture thing but my mom was working <laughs> abroad um we had maids taking care of us um it's not as fancy as you think it is but uh it does sound fancy yeah. but uh what do you call it i was watching tv and the maid told me to slowly lift up my legs <laughs> While I was watching TV, and a black snake was coiling around the leg of the of the chair that I was sitting, so I had to slowly lift up my leg. Like I think, like in like it was a black snake. So like I was thinking, like man, could have been a black mamba. Could have been like dead. When yeah, I was that's a child. that that's a snake that comes to mind. But like, do they do they habitat? Are they like inhabit? I don't know. The There's a lot of snakes in the Philippines that are like pretty dangerous but like okay ralph has like been trying to get me to visit the philippines with him like whenever he goes next and there are some stories that make it sound like the coolest place on earth and then there's this stuff and i'm like bro i don't know like it's probably we're gonna be in hotels but like what do you call it so i slowly lift up my legs and then uh they took like a like a machete and just like killed it on the spot while i was like lifting the maid had a machete (laughs) Gotta keep the kids safe, dude. Combat maids. This yeah. is anime. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we digress. Sorry about that. Sure. Oh, yeah, right. Plague Tale Requiem. So, yeah, there's, like, a bunch of, like, swarms of, like, mice, right? That yeah. was, like, in the trailer or something. So, I don't know. It seems, in, like, the narrative seems kind of cool. Did you play the first one? I actually turned it on. I played it for a little bit. It seemed really interesting mm-hmm. at first. Um, I, Did you play it after watching this showcase? No, or? no, no, no. I, I, I downloaded okay. it on Game Pass like a while back. I think that's one of the main problems with Game Pass. Like, it makes it feel very like, eh, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, 
like because you're not doing like an actual purchase like you like download delete stuff like all the time and i played yeah. it for like maybe two hours and then like i ran out of room on my computer so i like just deleted it like that is, that is what I'm scared about. Like, if I do, uh, if I get like a gaming PC or like a Steam Deck or you know PlayStation Plus Extra, um, just like hopping subscription services. Like, I'm scared that like they'll like my drive and like hype towards a game just like mm-hmm. won't be there. So the yeah. sticking power just will be fizzled out almost immediately. Right. I don't know. Who does? Yeah. Uh, for some motorsports. This is so I don't really follow the series. I know that you you played Horizon, uh, Forza Horizon, which came out last year. Mm -hmm. And like one of your biggest complaints is that like Forza Horizon is like an open world game. You just want like a strictly racer. So does Forza do this often where there's like several different. Yeah, this is typically what Forza does where like they have the Horizon one and then they have the Motorsport one, uh, Mm -hmm. Motorsport one. Um, unfortunately, I hate sim racers. Like, I just need like. Oh, I thought like you were you'd been happy for this one. No, I I I definitely am mm-hmm. glad that it's around. I want Need for Speed. I just want Need for Speed. I just want. Isn't there one coming out? Yeah, but it's probably gonna be open world. I just want Need for Speed Underground, <laughs> and I just want like Need for Speed Carbon, which is probably one of my favorite Need for Speed games, which I don't think people wow. like that much. But like, um. I just want, like, a fast, really garbage, like, you know, like, arcade racer. You don't need to take it too seriously. Like, the sim racers are, like, way too hard. Like, like you need to figure out, like, if it's a front-wheel drive, a rear-wheel drive, if it's racing. Braking and then accelerate, yeah. Right. And Dude, then, like, give me Mario Kart, man. Right, and then they're, they're like, oh, yeah, like, you drive differently when the asphalt is hard, like, hot. Like. Oh, man. Like, yeah, it's. Like, like it's a which lot. is cool, but yeah, it's you not know, for me. You, I feel like you want to like turn off your brain, just like play a racing right. game, and you cannot do that, with Forza. Yeah, for sure. So like, I mean, uh, I know that people have been saying that a new Need for Speed game is coming out this year. So I'm hoping that's, that's what I've true, heard, but I don't think we've so. gotten like news on it, right? No. Yeah. I mean, EA okay. hasn't done a conference yet, right? Yeah, no. I don't think so. So yes. Yeah. Um, so Forza, it'll you know it's in the showcase, so it'll obviously be on Game Pass, which is the nice thing, right? You could just try it out um, right. if you're on the fence about it. So um, yeah, Overwatch Two PvP will be free so and then play. launching this October. It is it's multiplayer as well, so it's not yeah. just on PC and Xbox. Yeah, that's cool. That makes sense. I mean, I think the rule of thumb is just like if it was multiplat before, then it's staying multiplat. Like, mm-hmm. I think yeah, the and the free thing is cool. Um, I think, I think this will definitely help it because there's like there's Apex, yeah. Rogue Company, obviously, um, like um, Call of Duty Warzone, like those right. are all free. Like, and they're kind, of, I would say they're direct competitors with this. So the the free to play style is logical here. Yeah. Um, curious to see like how it'll be monetized because i know that they're it'll be i read they're not doing loot boxes they're just doing the battle pass yeah they're definitely doing a loot box there's no way there's they no said they're way. taking out loot boxes and just moving towards battle pass for now <laughs> for now um but uh yeah. what do you call it uh battle pass is probably how they're gonna monetize it it's interesting that they're doing this and i think this might be a reaction to like what's the point in doing Overwatch 2 when it's pretty much the same game like on the PvP side so it basically yeah isn't yeah. it just so like I think the that's the move thing. for them um so I'm curious to see how they're going to like work around the Overwatch 2 campaign cuz I feel like the majority of the work may have gone to that campaign and we just don't know anything about it yet yeah like so I'm that... almost thinking it's a standalone product at this point I think it will be too. I think that one you might need to pay like 30, 40 bucks. Yeah. I don't know. And then the PvP stuff is free. Right. Um, like the the modern warfare approach. Yeah. To be honest. So yeah. Um, I don't know. I know you play it every now and then. So are you like looking forward to this? Or I mean, I like, only okay. play it because I, I, I want to catch up with my boy Nolan. But yeah. Because that's, that's all Nolan and Shelby play. 
Like they they have hundreds of hours into Overwatch and they're really mm-hmm. good at it. And they like it a lot and like I get it. Like it's something quick that you can jump into. They know how to play it and it's a it's a good way for them to spend time with each other. But for um, sure. it's just not like my thing. It's fine. Cool. Um, <laughs> next Excuse one, block you. Ara History Untold. It was like that sort of that strategy game. Oh, the uh, next nothing- Civ? No game, yeah. I thought it was just gonna be like the next Civ game. <coughs> Excuse Plus me. Again. Jeez. Um. Yeah. No gameplay shown. Just like this interesting premise of like pre-modern societies and like a more futuristic setting, like how that would have taken. So I have like no idea about it, but like I honestly want to learn more about it. Oh really? Um. Not like huge on those strategy games like Civ that we kind of talked about last episode, but um. I don't know. The just like that cinematic trailer seemed kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely going to be a Civ game. If you want to play Civ, let me know. I'll just give you my codes. Like, I'll wait for give Aura. you the logins, dude. Um, okay, similarly, Elder Scrolls Online, High IO, and then Fallout 76, The Pit. Sure. I'm, I have nothing you know, to say. I have zero things to say about those things. My only thing that I'm going to say is uh, there has to be people who play these games yeah. like and are very dedicated to them, like, whatever fan base that is, because, like, wow, I'm surprised they're making new content. Especially for Fallout 76, which is just, like, so infamous around its launch window. Right. Just everything about it was just, like, a dumpster fire. So um, I'm surprised there's enough people to dedicate, you know, making this new expansion. Um, same with Elder Scrolls Online. That game has been around for such a long time. Yeah. But, hey, if people play it, that's that's cool, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Um, Arc two coming out in 2023 Dude, with your boys Diesel. and Diesel. I've already seen some memes about like the family and stuff. And just Dude, I just don't Vin get Diesel it. Stuff. Like I was just like, "Dude, Vin Diesel, why? <laughs> why Vin Diesel, dude?" It's so weird. I think part of it has to be like meme sticking power. Like all the stuff he does in Fast and Furious. So like, okay, let's get him on here because meme memes sell. Like, and I they... feel like he did a quote right. If you're like. If you're a real gamer, you would be excited for Ark. I'm pretty sure he did like a quote. For did that. he like tweet that or something? <laughs> I don't know. I kind of want to look it up. Well, um, I don't think I'm a real gamer then because yeah, I'm, I'm not, not at all for... remotely excited for Ark. Oh my god! One second, let me look it up. But you can keep on talking. I just want to okay, confirm. Cool. Uh, Flintlock launches next year. It was that sort of action adventure game when you have like the pet like spirit fox thing that was attacking people along with you. Um, this seemed kind of cool. It's also multi-plat, not just launching on Xbox. And it just seemed like a, a run-of-the-mill action-adventure game with some decent combat mechanics. Um, and then the cute pet fox, obviously. Oh, okay. Yeah, so here's a, here it is. This Fo- is good. So this is the good stuff. I'm following mm-hmm. Sunday's showcase. Diesel took to Instagram to share his very not biased opinion on the upcoming title and it, and its president uh predecessor as well as some other exciting news the best game out right now is our survival evolved my son introduced me to the game many years back uh then the studio wildcard um and all the other geniuses over there asked me to shepherd the ip into the tv and film space an honor i can't begin to describe uh, any real gamer is excited for arc 2 <laughs> What a goober, Meme dude. material, right? Exactly. Meme I kind of want Ark to be just like, oh, can we just get The Rock? Like, I just want them to, like, replace Vin Diesel with The Rock. That'd be dude. hilarious. I would think that'd be so funny. Or just, like, uh, or a, yeah, like a competitor. We'll just put in The Rock and then, yeah. Dude, just like a DLC with The, the Rock. For yeah, oh, survival. that'd be good, too. Yeah. <sighs> okay, anyway. Yeah, this is literally Fast and Furious, like, 10 11 yeah. i don't even know which ones are on right now but yeah um okay minecraft legends slide yeah <laughs> it's it, i know it's like past our generation but did you not play man, did you play I'm minecraft so, in high school no i've played minecraft for like five minutes i'm like that, that ain't it man we played uh we had a like a server for minecraft me and my friends oh so you actually did play it a lot yeah not a lot but we played it for like a week yeah it was a fun time i like how it's generational yeah. like oh yeah i know like people our age played when we were younger and high schoolers and middle schoolers now are still playing minecraft like streamers are keeping it alive too um so this is yeah it's it's a third person game it's, a, it's like it's foot and strategy too 
So it's not just like the same stuff right. set in that world. Um, interesting nonetheless. I'm sure it'll do very well. Uh, Lightyear Frontier. It's like an open world farming game with Max. <laughs> I See, don't this is this. actually the, the only reason I put on here is like, sure, it seemed like, okay, it was whatever, but any game that's like remotely similar to like Starfield, it's just like, why would you release it? Yeah. If, oh, if it's, if you know it, what? I do remember you know. this. The, right. Like, I remember this because it looks like a Love, Death, and Robots uh, episode. So there was a there was okay. a Love, Death, and Robots episode where like you're in Max and then they had to like live off planet and then they were like protecting their farm from aliens. And was I was it like, the new season? I was in last season, I think. Okay. But uh, it like it gave off that big vibe of like a similar thing. But I actually might want to check this out. <laughs> I like forgot okay. it for a hot second <laughs> when he's like, "Yeah, light your frontier." Yeah, I mean, my thought was just like. Any sort of, like, open world or, like, travel or, like, you know, you do you in space. Yeah. Like, I mean, I would much rather play Starfield right. than um, Lightyear Frontier. But I don't know. Sure. It is what it is. Uh, Gunfire Reborn. Cute animals. Co-op roguelite shooter. I, like, don't remember this. <laughs> if if you saw, like, a screenshot, like, It's oh, the yeah, 1.5 seconds. It's a 1.5 place. That was a 1.5-er. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Naraka Blade Point, to Xbox this month. That's a That's game. Fine. So it's like a yeah, it's like a, it's a battle royale yeah. like with action. swords. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to play it. You should. I know it's on. It's, it's on PlayStation as well. You right? got it for free, dude. Okay, you for, might check it I out. Mean, what do you call? I mean, unless you don't like put everything that's on PlayStation Plus on your library, which you should. I may have. I don't remember. But I do it I think every it month. Review well. Yeah, I do it every month. I'm just like, yeah. I don't care if you're bad, but I paid for you, and I you're going in my library. Right. So. Right. A free game is a free game. Yeah. Um, grounded 1.0. Yep. Yeah. So this has been around for like a couple of years, and I thought it was officially released, but that was like a beta or an alpha. Yeah, people thought um, that about Rogue Company too. So. Fair, yeah. fair. So, I, yeah, I know you and other Bren played this a lot, and it was on VR, right? No, it was not. Um, it's just, like, it was okay. just, like, a Game Pass thing. If people don't know what Grounded is, it's essentially, like, Honey, honey I Shrunk, shrunk the Your kids. kids, yeah. Yeah. And then you are playing with some, some flies, and you kill some ants. It, it was pretty cool. I yeah. kind of want you to get yeah. a PC. There's so many games that I feel like you would enjoy playing with people on PC. Honestly... For next gen, I think I'm gonna go the PC route because you'll have games which we can talk about yeah. for a completely different episode. Right. But given like the trends of like the industry, um, I think I might go yeah, PC. PC is where it's at. So, yeah, because all the PlayStation games are coming to PC anyway. So what's the point? Essentially, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Diablo Four launching next year, and what's really cool is it'll have couch co-op. I'm not sure if Diablo Three did. It did. Okay. All the yeah, Diablo okay. games did. Okay. Uh, actually, I don't know. Three definitely did because I played that with Sam. Okay, yeah. So four will also have couch co-op and then cross play as well. So I didn't play. I played like some of two. Uh, did not play three. So I'm I'm actually very down to play four. Would and you? Four we'll talk about it, dude. We should yeah. totally play it together. I'm totally down. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. How much um how much co-op was in three? Was it like four? All people of it. Two? Uh, I think it's four. Okay. Wow. Yeah. We could have. We could have a good time with that, though. Yeah. Nice. You can play Diablo um, Immortal right now with four people. Let's do that. Whatever. Uh, Lo Long Fallen Dynasty. It's fine. This, so there wasn't any gameplay that was shown, but it literally just looked like Sekiro yeah. on Xbox. So that's why I was really excited for Is it. Sekiro not on Xbox? Sekiro is on Xbox. I was going to say. Yeah, but like more Sekiro, just yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, um, it's Team Ninja, though, right? So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, 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 which is awesome. So that's cool. Um, I think it's coming out next year. Right. Um, this one you're definitely like super hyped on Persona Three Portable, Persona Four Golden, and Persona Five Royal, finally coming to Xbox and PC, and also um, Pers Persona Three and Persona Four are coming to PlayStation as well. Yeah. Um, but this is the first time they're on the Xbox stuff. Obviously, they're on here, so they're going to be on Game Pass. 
Um, are you going to give them another shot? I know you're occasionally oh, yeah. like, oh, man, I kind of want to play some more Persona. I kind of want to sink another, like, 120 <laughs> hours then. What do you call I'm definitely going to get them. Uh, I mean, I have Game Pass anyway, so... Uh, yeah. I'm planning on getting a Steam Deck this fall. I put my, uh, I put my, uh, what do you call my pre-order in, so hopefully I get that in. And then, uh, yeah, I'll definitely check in. I, like, really dropped Persona 3 because I think, like, yeah. I think it's, like, the oldest one and, like, the dungeons aren't even dungeons. It's, like, it's, it's definitely like, Imagine Mementos, like, the entire thing. But, like, I really, I just really want to get to know that cast and it's very character-driven, so I want to check that out, um. Mm-hmm. I I've been itching to play four again, so like I like want to play that, and I'll probably play Royal again on the the Steam Deck. So. Yeah, so I played four Golden. Um, I think like right before I got my PS Five. Yeah, and so that was that was a couple of years ago. Coming up on two years for the PS Five release date, which is that crazy. was your first time playing four, right? That was my first time playing yeah. four, and then when I watched the showcase, I'm like, damn, dude. I kind of want to play more. Four, yeah. four golden is so good. Uh, I still need to be five royal, so yeah. I really don't yeah. have. A what do you call it? I I stand by it. Persona Five Royal is definitely the better game, um, but I do believe, and as much as it hurts me, I mean it shouldn't hurt me because I love all the Persona games. Mm-hmm. Like four has better characters, like hands. Oh down. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I we've talked about this like so much. Um, yeah, like, if they, if they remade 4, I, I think it would be yeah. the best yeah. one. Um, but yeah, they're all good. Definitely uh, check them out if you have the ability to and if you haven't played them. No, I kind of, man, I kind of hope they remake 4, but realistically, I want them to remake 3. Yeah, or 1 or 2. Yeah. Like, just from the ground up, that would be awesome. Um, cool. Kojima and Xbox are doing a what partnership. A, what He's a making... nothing burger announcement. I was just yeah. like, what a stupid announcement, dude. It was just, here's something to be hyped over. Uh, he's making, apparently, the game he's always wanted to make. Um, Which is super, and... I think, annoying. Ugh, man, we're, we're never going to get sponsored by anything. <laughs> but, like, I find that super... It's okay. a slap in the face to, like, everything else he's released. No, I it's, it's annoying to me because, like, like, when he went to PlayStation and they made, like, a huge deal about it, like... I finally get to make the I, I finally get to make the game that I've always wanted to make. You know what I yeah. mean? So like you wanna make all of these games. Like just say I wanna try and make different games. Don't say that like I've always wanted to make this game. You could have done that with Death Stranding. I thought Death Stranding was the game you've always wanted to make. Yeah. Right? So it, like it, That's what I'm saying. Like like what was Death Stranding then? Like what was Metal Gear Solid? Like Right. So like I don't know. But people I don't know, man. People love Kojima. I feel like he's the Elon Musk of the video game world. Maybe. That's, that's probably exaggerated, yeah. but I think there's some merit to that. Right. So, like, um, yeah. I just wish that there's, like, more information about, like, whatever that is. Like, like yeah, cool. You're making a game for someone. Great. <laughs> like, we don't know anything about it. Yeah. It was it was interesting to throw out. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. This is, this is just the Xbox Flex showcase, so yeah. of course I can throw it in there. And then obviously ending on a really high note is Starfield. A I know, really... interesting. So I, I actually, going into Starfield, um, I didn't really look into it too much. I'm not like, I wouldn't say I, I dislike Todd Howard. He's like pretty okay for me. He like, he doesn't, like if I see his name attached to something like that, doesn't get me excited necessarily. Um, so then they showed a lot of gameplay, just a lot of like details about it. It looks really cool to me. Like Interesting. I going into it, like I was again, just, like pretty whatever, like very five out of ten. But now I'm like actually very hyped for Starfield. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to play it, but I do really want to play so, it. Because you're buying an Xbox now. I don't know. I might. Like I feel it, like you should just build a PC. Like, it seems like an in-depth Mass Effect. Don't. Like, Mass no, Effect no. will, like, more open world. How dare you? I'm offended. It does, right? I'm Mass offended. Mass Effect will, like, open world. No, I don't know. I'm... It looked fine to me. Honestly, I, I, I looked at it, and, like, it seemed... Really... Okay. It, it, like, it, I looked at it, and, like, it seemed really boring. Like... Really? Yeah, like... Okay. I just... I have an, if... I have an issue with Bethesda, because they always overpromise stuff. It's always, like... 
They're trying to sell you, like, this is the best thing that's ever going to happen. And it's always below whatever that is. You know what I mean? Like, they're saying, oh, the gonna... best is very difficult. Right? No, I hate you. But, like, they're like, oh, there's going to be a thousand planets. And I'm like, they're going to be empty. And what's the point in right? Going? Like, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, is there actually going to be stuff worth exploring on those planets? Right. Yeah. And then, like, I looked at the combat and I'm like, oh, this doesn't look good. Like, this combat. The combat look looks good. all right. The gunplay? I don't think so. Like, I hmm. like I think there's, like, no feedback with, like, when people get shot. Oh, like, like, like fire like, the gun. It just doesn't, fe- yeah. it doesn't look, I don't know. Maybe I could, I, I'll be wrong, but, like, I would have just rather prefer, like, hey, there's eight planets on the solar system, but, mm-hmm. like, you're in that solar system, but all those eight planets are, like, bangers. You know what I mean? Like, right. Right. Like I just, I get that. Like I'm, I'm just concerned. I, I mean, I could definitely like be wrong, but I wasn't too excited about it. And then like, I know like this has been like hammered home by like everyone on the mm-hmm. internet already. But when I was watching Starfield, I was like, man, this really looks like No Man's Sky. <laughs> like, like it's definitely yeah. So that's definitely been the a favorite like piece of rhetoric from the internet. Um, and so I watch, like I said, like I, I just watch this and. Only, like, part of that actual, like, showcase of Starfield made me think of No Man's Sky. Yeah, but th- maybe it's because you, have, like, you, it's you don't so know what's... like, it's so much more than that, you know? I don't know, though, because, like, I had, like, that organic thought in my brain, like, before I even got on the internet. Like, like the mining, mm-hmm. the, the, what do you call it? the animals looked like the animals from No Man's Sky, like building the ships, like making your own home base, like all of that stuff is in No Man's Sky. Like the dog fighting, that's in No Man's Sky. Like I, so I only I've passed like the uh, the original release of right. No Man's Sky. Like I haven't like looked right. Into so it, like all so. of the new stuff that No Man's Sky has added, like like that's kind of what Starfield has. Obviously, Starfield will probably mm-hmm. have more narrative. Starfield will probably have more, like, narr- like what do you call it, impactful choices and things like that. But, like, right. what do you call it? It's, like, even the the main story feels like No Man's Sky. Like, you, like the, the main story for Starfield is, like, you're looking through the galaxy for these artifacts. And that's, mm-hmm. what you, that's like, the main storyline for No Man's Sky, too. <laughs> like, you're looking for artifacts in the galaxy... I like mean, a, let's be real. That that sort space. of narrative is not. It's just space. That's like space narrative. Right. Like here you go. I don't know. Like it, it's not breaking any boundaries. But yeah. I I didn't know it would have a narrative. I thought it would just be like open world, like yeah. go for it. So I'm glad that there is some sort of yeah. guiding narrative. But um, I don't know. I yeah. And in classic professionally casual gamers fashion, we disagree <laughs> on something like that. Like I, I think it looks cool. Yeah, I mean, it also um, doesn't look like it runs well. It looked chuggy to me. <laughs> like I was like, this doesn't look smooth, dude. Um, I don't remember feeling that way, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's, I mean clearly you're wrong, yeah. but it's fine. Clearly, I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, one thing we'll we'll probably hopefully agree on was that the Final Fantasy VII 25th anniversary showcase. Um, maybe not all of it was absolutely awesome, but there were definitely some parts that yeah. were extremely hyped. Just skip to the good uh, this stuff. This is especially Alex. just skip to what? the good stuff. Um. Well. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> there's they're doing a lot with just the Final Fantasy right. VII um name and like just that entry alone which is kind of weird because there's obviously so many other games but seven is easily the most notable and they're playing on that um and they're making it work which is good because if they just did it for the sake of money it would be so oh man like the internet would just be up and um up in fire and pitchforks and you know they'd be upset about that but yeah we've got some cool stuff uh, the first thing it released was First Soldier, which is this Battle Royale on iOS yeah. and Android. I wish it was on PC or platforms because I would actually want to try it. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'd like it, but I would want to at least try yeah. it. Um, Ever Crisis, yeah. which is honestly, I think the coolest thing yeah. about yeah. this is, whole is show Ever Crisis just like Crisis Core, but like in that chibi style. So Final Fantasy Ever Crisis is the whole Final Fantasy VII lineage and timeline. Oh, wow. 
on iOS and Android. But what's cool is, so it's bringing back the like the turn-based right. pedals, um, and it, it is more in like that top-down view um, that like Final Fantasy VII originally right, had. Right, but the fight models are like dope. Yeah, so when you actually go into the battles, it brings up like the Final Fantasy VII remake slash rebirth Very character cool. models, which is so cool. And I have to imagine that this will come to PC eventually. Because yeah. um, a lot of, and this is like in the industry, a lot of mobile games do end up finding their way to PC just because like it's an easy transition. Right. And I know if you're on PC, you can also have like Android games on it, just right. like through emulation. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I, I, I would I will hopefully so check it's, that it's out. the full it's the full core story right like the normal story of seven with crisis core stuff I'm I, I would be super down to play that is that coming out this year mm-hmm. um the beta is this year so probably next year what does that even mean they're just doing a beta for it. I don't know uh but yeah it's it's cool because like obviously with remake and that new trilogy right it's not final fantasy 7 it's like a different like yeah. timeline so to say so if you want just like the pure final fantasy 7 experience like ever crisis is the way to do it yeah i might do that it's, it doesn't like mess with the story it is just, like the original thing i That's guess cool. i guess we're just gonna spoil all of remake huh alex what do you mean <laughs> like yeah, it's just like the core story the core the story is <laughs> the... <laughs> i mean you know the sequel <laughs> announced like yeah it's okay. Um, next one, Final Fantasy, Core, or sorry, Crisis Core, Final Fantasy Seven Reunion yep. is coming out this winter, and that is it's um, it's just a the the upscale the HD version of Crisis Core Final Fantasy Seven, which was originally yep. just on the PSP. Um, so that's going to be released multiplat this winter, which will give the backstory of Final Fantasy Seven, which is great because. Uh, this next thing, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, is part two. which is is part two. Uh, it was like widely like theorized that the Final Fantasy VII remake was would be, be a trilogy. Part, yeah, yeah. Uh, so this confirmed that the next entry is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which will play into um, it'll lean into that character Zach, who is you know a part of the prequel, which is Crisis Core. So ecosystems right yeah. with xbox having like game pass playstation doing this this is like a final fantasy 7 ecosystem right right where you need like all these different pieces of media to have like the whole story which is kind of annoying that you can't just like have this one game and like that's it for the whole thing like no like you need to play crisis core to understand uh rebirth and you need right. to play the original final fantasy 7 to know like remake and you know how it's impacted so I don't know. I can understand the frustration with that, and I've read some of that online. Um, for the case of me, where like I've already played like that stuff, and yeah. like I'm like this is just more. Awesome Did you play content. Crisis Core? Uh, I played a lot of it. I, I I know generally what happens. Okay, like, I've watched like YouTube like walkthroughs with it because I actually didn't like the combat system. Yeah, I'm curious to see if. Final Fantasy, like, Ever Crisis Reunion mm-hmm. is the... Well, the names. The, no, the normal one? Or if it's, like, the weird one? You know what I mean? Because, like... No, I don't know what you mean. So, what do you call it? Fuck it. It's been, like, three years. It's been three years, people. I We can talk about Final Fantasy. Yeah, anyway. you can talk about Fuck right it. So, like... I'm curious to see if Ever Crisis is the new timeline of Final Fantasy VII, where... Okay, so I think you're mixing them up. So there's Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, which is the... It's on iOS and Android, and that's just the the original timeline. Reunion, whatever that is. Crisis Core, Final Fantasy VII Reunion. Oh, it's it's called Crisis Core? Yes. Okay, so I'm curious to see if Crisis Core Reunion is the new timeline for seven so like i'm very confident it is not i'm pretty sure it's just an hd remaster of the psp game i think it will be i think i've read that i'm well no one like except for square enix actually knows this right but i've read that it's just the hd port of the psp game yeah i mean it would be interesting to see it as the new timeline because 
I feel like when we had our initial conversations, the reason we started the podcast anyway, was when we had our deep dive on, what do you call it? Seven Remake. Seven Remake. And one thing that I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, is that at the end of Final Fantasy VII Remake, the Zack scene has differences of what it's it changed. Was. It's changed. Yeah. So, like, I'm curious to see if this is one of those things where, like, marketing this game, it makes it seem like it's going to be the normal thing, and then it's actually, like, the crazy weird stuff when you actually so... get into the game. I think because Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, they showed in the trailer Zach and like Cloud walking. Um, that was Zach. They're gonna, they're gonna. He was in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So they're gonna go into that a lot more in Rebirth. Okay. So Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion will just be the original PSP game. Uh, in like HD remastered, yeah. which you need to know that. Like that whole story, that original context, right. to feel the impact of how it's changed in Rebirth. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. What would you? Yeah. What would Which you, is annoying, right? What would you prefer? All these pieces of media. What would you prefer as a Final Fantasy fan? Would you prefer it to be the normie like story, or would you prefer it to be like a new experience entirely? Oh no, I'm. This is perfectly fine because then the new experience experience will be Rebirth. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so I I think it makes sense Um, timeline-wise, like releasing the Crisis Core HD remaster this winter, and then Rebirth is coming next year. So you'll be caught up on the story and like, oh, it's changed this way, which makes sense because I just played that. So yeah, yeah, so yeah, so a lot of good stuff. Obviously, Starfield's gonna be great. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so thank you for sticking around for our 32nd episode of Professionally Casual Gamers. We had a lot, a lot of fun hanging out with each other, and we hope you did too. If you have any discussion topics or questions, send over to us on Professionally Casual Gamers at gmail.com or our Instagram slash Twitter, which we always check at Professionally Casual we Gamers. <laughs> See you next week and keep it casual. Later. Nice.